Have you ever picked up a piece of wire and on it it says AWG? Well, that stands for American Wire Gauge. In this case, it happens to be six gauge. To help us contextualize this, we're going to do a quiz and we're going to find out how the resistance changes with the size of the wire. So stick around and hopefully you can learn a little something about the American Wire Gauge System. For today's quiz, we have a piece of wire. It fits in a welding project that we're making. Our problem is this wire still has too much resistance. So we need to end up having a new piece of wire. It's gonna be the same length, so it still fits in, and we're still gonna use copper. We simply wanna know what do we have to do with the other dimensions, that is the radius and the area, in order to get half the resistance. Here's what your quiz looks like today. I'll hold this up. As always, mark your level of confidence and explicate your ideas as thoroughly as possible. Typical student responses are that you have to double the size. Now the teacher's gonna push back on this right away and say, well, specifically the quiz asked for how the radius changes. So most students will say, obviously you have to double it. But other students will say, wait, 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 maybe we have to double the diameter. And yet others might say, no, I think it's doubling the area. A few others might end up saying it doesn't really matter. Electrons will go faster even if it's smaller, but no one really buys that. Most of them realize they're going to double something. They're just not sure what. To help us think through our problem, we might want to think of a wire as being like a pipe for water. And I can draw that up here. Instead of electrons flowing through a wire, we can think of water going through a pipe. And clearly, if I make the pipe bigger, it's going to be easier for things to flow through there. So we're going to end up having something about the cross-sectional area, and that's going to involve a radius. So we'll need to draw that on there, and we're going to end up using the same length of wire. Remember, we just want to have the resistance, and we're still going to end up using copper. So most of our students are going to realize that our pipe would probably need to get bigger to have easier flow. Let me draw what we have so far. We know that we're going to end up having a radius, R, R, and we've got an area, A. And some length, L. From here to here. like that. Most of our students can put this together and they could say, well, the longer the pipe, the harder it's going to be to get through. And if we used a material that wasn't as good as copper, it'd be more difficult. And clearly the size of it, that is the area is going to matter. So we can end up getting our resistance formula as our resistance is equal to our rho. That is, what is the material made out of? We can end up having our length all over our area A. And of course, area for anything round like this involves pi. In this case, pi r squared. So I can write where area equals pi r squared. I'll put that in the formula. Resistance equals our rho, our L, all over our pi and our r squared. Now we can start thinking about making our resistance half. In order to do that, we probably need, need to make a pipe that's wider or bigger. Let me draw that one out. All right, I've drawn out this blue pipe and it's clearly going to be thicker, which means it's got a bigger radius and a bigger area. Let me put those on now. Our resistance is going to end up being smaller because the radius is bigger. And clearly this has a much bigger area than our red pipe. Now, it's going to have the same resistivity. So I'm going to put resistivity on here, normal size. And same thing with our red. I'll just put this has a normal size resistivity. And the length is going to be equal here 
to the red. So I'll put a normal size L and then I can draw my length like so. And of course, we're going to end up having the same general formula. We can say the resistance. Now, the overall resistance on the blue pipe or the blue wire, because it's bigger, is going to be smaller. So I'll draw the overall resistance as a smaller R. So I could say this resistance is going to end up being smaller. That might be too small. I can say R R is going to be equal to, well, it's got a normal size resistivity, a normal size length, but our area is going to be bigger. So I'm going to end up having a bigger area here in blue than I had here. Maybe I'll even make it a little bit larger just to show. And of course, we're going to have pi. Now, pi is going to be the same. Pi is pi. But our overall radius is going to end up being bigger. So I can say our smaller res uh, a smaller overall resistance has the same resistivity same length all over the same pi but here our radius is going to be bigger and that's going to end up being squared now what i can do is i can say this new pipe should have half the overall resistance of the red pipe so i'm going to try and keep these color coded and i can say well, this R here, R, which is blue, is going to have one half the resistance of our red. So I'll put one half the resistance of our bigger R. Now I can put for each the resistance of the blue and the red, all of our variables. So in this case, I can end up saying, well, that's going to end up being my rho, my L, all over, my pi, and then I've got my bigger R squared. And on the red side, I've got the same size rho, I've got the same size L, I've got the same size pi, but notice our R here is going to end up being smaller. And I still have the one half. Now, I'm going to make a little where statement, and I'm going to say, well, a lot of these can be eliminated because I can end up using maybe black here. I could say where our length equals our other length and our row equals the red row, because they're the same exact material. I don't think I need to put pi, because pi is going to be equal to pi. There's no difference. So I can eliminate those, and I can end up finding out what really matters. It's the radius. So in this case, I can say I've got my one-half, my normal size um, radius square, must equal my one all over my blue radius square. Now I can flip both of these, and if you don't believe me, you could just multiply each side. I can multiply the top here by two r squared, and I could multiply um, the r squared over here. In other words, I'm gonna end up with everything on top. The reason why I wanna do it this way is so I can keep my color coding. So I can end up saying my r squared blue must equal my one-half, or two R squared now. Now I can square root both sides, and I can say, well, my blue R, R is going to end up equaling the square root of two, times my R. And the square root of two is 1.414. In other words, the red is going to end up being smaller, and the blue is going to end up being 
1.414, not double, as a lot of our students had thought. Now that we have all this work done, we can now summarize by saying, well, if I wanted half the resistance, I could take and make my area twice as big. So the students were thinking correctly about something need, needing doubled, but it's the area. But when we ask about the radius, it's not so easy, right? This radius, let's say it's one, is gonna end up uh, needing to be multiplied by 1.414 in order to get half of that resistance. Not as intuitive as maybe the area. All right, let's bring this back to our piece of wire. In fact, let me hold this up so you can see it's six gauge. Let me see if the camera will adjust. The American wire gauge ends up jumping by increments of three, and that is the area. So if I were to want half of the resistance of the six gauge, I would go to three gauge. And uh, that's essentially going to end up working on area. If I ended up doing something with a radius, and six gauge wire has about a radius of two millimeters. If I have that and made it one millimeter, I would now be at 12 gauge wire. And that would be the wire that you might have in your housing if you have like a heater or a 20 amp outlet. So um, it, this system's been around for over 150 years, still using it today. It's a little bit tricky to learn at first, but overall it works pretty well. So, all right, that's your quiz for today. Thank you for watching another Idealized Science Institute video. We are a nonprofit organization. If you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want, leave a comment below. It's helpful to us. If you can financially support us, go to our website and hit the donate button. If you can't, Simply by sharing these videos with other teachers and students in your life will be helpful. While at our website, you'll find that we have our Idealized Science Institute book that'll help you engage your students in dialogic discourse. There you'll also find we have a podcast where we break down educational research. We also have long-form lessons. If you're a teacher, you can watch these and go in the very next day and enact these. Along with this, we also have many other resources, including more quick quizzes. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.